You're listening to the Scotiabank Market Points podcast. I'm your host, Greg White. Market Points is part of the Knowledge Capital series, a collection of audio, video, and written commentary from Scotiabank Global Banking and Markets leaders designed to provide you with timely insights and analysis. At the start of the pandemic's reach into North America, the Canadian dollar tumbled. But by the end of April 2021, the loonie had hit highs against the U.S. dollar that it hadn't seen for just over three years. Is all this strength leading us back to parity? On this episode of Market Points, Scotiabank Chief Currency Strategist Sean Osborne joins us to discuss the rise in the Canadian dollar and where we could be headed from here. Hi, Sean. Great to have you back on the podcast. Hey, Greg. Nice to be here. Canadian dollar ended April over 80 cents. I haven't been there for a while. When you're thinking about where we've come from, from, you know, the beginning of the pandemic when we were below 70 cents, have, have, th- have things played out as expected? Well, I think we've been constructive on the outlook for the Canadian dollar uh, for some time. At this point, things I would say are largely developing as we expected. That's to say the, the broader macro backdrop of generally low interest rates, low volatility uh, alongside a clear rebound in the global economy should favor the growth sensitive currencies like the Canadian dollar. Uh, and at the same time, we would expect the US dollar to soften in a general sense, reflecting the relative decline in what's called US exceptionalism, that's to say um, superior, usually superior US yields and rates of growth in the US, which are typically strong sources of support for the US dollar. Um, they are much less obvious at this stage of the cycle. But I would say the CAD's rise is developing perhaps a little quicker than we anticipated. Um, And it is one of the better performing currencies over the last 12 months. From that perspective, I think it's important to uh, note the context of the Canadian dollar's rally. The Canadian dollar dropped to 68 cents at the low point, or around 147 in dollar Canada terms, in March of last year as the COVID crisis unfolded. Uh, And that left the Canadian dollar looking extremely undervalued, in my opinion. And there is a tendency, I think, to focus mainly on the a uh, very strong 18% or so Canadian dollar rebound that we've seen from that point. I think a more realistic perspective will be to perhaps look at how the Canadian dollar was trading on average prior to COVID. And from that point, the CADS gain is, is only around 5% or so, so it's much more measured. The new factors supporting the Canadian dollar's rally, I think, are the stronger than expected rebound in the Canadian economy that has emerged certainly um, as a factor in late 2020 and so far in 2021. In response, the Bank of Canada has adopted a more constructive outlook on the on growth, and it has reduced the pace of asset purchases that it's been uh, undertaking in support of the economy. And it's also indicated that rate increases may be coming through a bit sooner than we had expected previously. This is lifting Canadian yields and driving interest rate differentials more strongly in the CAD's favour. Are you getting any signals from you know what you're watching here that parity could be on the horizon again, like it was? Um you know, a decade or so ago? Yeah, it's an interesting question. I think it's um, uh, given that we're sort of approaching the 120 point, it's it's started to uh, revive memories of, of some of these big up cycles in the Canadian dollar that um, we've seen over the past few decades. I think it's important to remember the context of, of um, that period, particularly in the early 2000s, when the Canadian dollar traded above parity uh, against uh, the US dollar. We got to um, parity in 2006 and 2007. And again, in in fact, in 2010, I would say the moves in the early 2000s were driven mainly, and I'm shorthanding the issues here uh, in essence for brevity's sake, but um, I think the main factors at that point were a very weak US dollar that followed the, the dot-com bust in the late 1990s and early 2000s, um, and a weaker US economy that was aggravated uh, by the housing market crash. Uh, another factor would be the sharp rebound in commodities in the early 2000s as the Chinese economy was slowly coming on stream. Um, at that point, it was also the refocusing on what was called the old economy uh, factors of commodities after the dot-com new economy crash. I think the CAD itself was um, still in recovery mode after undershooting quite significantly to a record low of 62 cents, uh, or around 162 in dollar Canada terms in the uh, in the early 2000s, and and that process of correcting that that weakness was uh, still ongoing at that point. Um, I think another important factor around about that time was um, some very significant merger and acquisition activity inbound to Canada that was involving the mining sector at the time. But um, the deal was very significant, and certainly gave the Canadian dollar uh, a fairly uh, a fairly important tailwind at that time. 
And uh, perhaps in the second phase of that uh, Canadian dollar strength and the push below parity or beyond parity uh, for the Canadian dollar in 2010 and 2011 was um, a much more hawkish Bank of Canada policy posture relative to the Fed. So I think the current rally in the Canadian dollar is somewhat reminiscent of some of the conditions that we saw uh, in the early 2000s. That's to say the Canadian dollar is soft, commodities are strengthening, the Canadian dollar seems to be benefiting from uh, this sort of newly minted hawkish stance from uh, the Bank of Canada. But I think there's also some important differences um, between now and the early 2000s. Back then, the uh, the US dollar was exceptionally weak versus a somewhat softer US dollar uh, tone that we are seeing um, at the moment. When dollar Canada was trading around par, euro dollar was, was dealing, for example, at 160 and euro dollar at the moment is trading around 40 cents below that point. So that's that's clearly a significant difference. Commodity prices certainly firm right now. Uh, but commodity prices generally have been relatively soft in the last uh, few years. And um, the, the strength in commodities that we're seeing generally at the moment don't really compare to, again, what we saw in the early um, early 2000s. Oil prices were trading close to $100 a barrel when the Canadian dollar first got close to parity. They eventually went on to trade um, at a peak of $140 a barrel, uh, in fact, uh, whereas crude is is relatively steady now around, uh, around below $60 a barrel uh, mark. There aren't any major M&A deals, I'd say, inbound to Canada, uh, certainly that I'm aware of at the moment. In fact, I would say the major focus from an M&A perspective at the moment is uh, the Canadian interest in, in taking over Kansas City Southern, uh, which might, I, I guess, infer some eventual demand for US dollars, although we clearly don't know uh, what the final points of that deal is at the moment or how or when it will close. So there are some similarities. Uh, but there are also some fairly major differences with that uh, previous cycle of, of exceptional Canadian dollar strength. We always think of the Canadian dollar having this uh, connection with with oil prices. And you had mentioned, you know, previously we, we had hit $100 a barrel. Um, do you think those days are are over? And uh, will, how, how does Canadian uh, the Canadian dollar get support, let's say, from a, a broader commodity base? I, I've learned in my, my experience never to say never. Uh, I would say at the moment... It's hard to envisage oil prices certainly uh, regaining that um, hundred dollars a barrel level or more or above a hundred dollars a barrel. I think what we've seen uh, so far in the global economic recovery is is relatively good price discipline from uh, the global oil producers. They've managed supply uh, fairly conservatively in respect to the state of the uh, the global economy. Uh, but there is uh, certainly some excess output potential there that uh, should be able to meet fairly easily rising demand for oil product in, in the next few months. That's not to say oil prices won't firm up a little bit more, but um, it's difficult to envisage, I think, a return to um, 100 or, or 100 plus dollars a barrel for crude. Other other commodity prices, however, could could continue to do really quite well. There's um, very strong demand for base and ferrous metals. And um, I think um, alongside increasing demand, there are some, some tightness, uh, there is some evident tightness in in global supply for some of these markets. And uh, we could see, I think, generally speaking, commodity prices uh, continue to grind higher in the coming months and uh, maybe in the medium term beyond that. Canada relevant commodities, agricultural prices, lumber prices, um, energy prices generally are fairly robust and do provide the Canadian dollar, I think, with a fair degree of protection uh, from softness and um, should continue to drive the Canadian dollar higher from a, a medium term point of view, I think. And what do you think the effect might be from, you know, we still have this possibility of a federal election. W- will there be an impact on the dollar from that? Well, I think the bookies would certainly favor an election at some point. Minority governments do tend to have a relatively sh- limited shelf life um, in um, in Canadian politics. Um, very few actually manage to serve out a full uh, four-year term. So the chances of an early election or some sort of snap election uh, are there. I think we've avoided the risk of that around the budget. That was mooted as a, as a potential um, issue. I think it was highly unlikely, certainly in the current environment, that uh, politicians would choose to uh, to go to the country as we're still in, in the grips of this um, pandemic. But certainly an early election in Canada um, or on an election before the end of uh, this government's uh, term is, is a possibility. Generally speaking, I'd say the Canadian dollar Typically approaches elections in, um, in with a fairly cool um, with a fairly cool head. In recent years, we've seen uh, or around recent elections, we've seen the Canadian dollar trade in a very stable fashion uh, around elections, and I think that's generally because, in terms of um, the major policy thrusts of, of the various parties that are in contention for for leading the leading the country, 
uh, or winning the election. Uh, there's very little difference in terms of major policy initiatives on, on issues that would typically perhaps affect the Canadian dollar fiscal policy uh, and, and such like. Um, the differences there have really been quite limited historically. So the Canadian dollar tends to um, take elections um, and, and even snap elections uh, pretty much in its stride. And I would expect that generally to remain uh, the case. Where do your Canadian dollar forecasts sit now? And given the recent announcements out of the Bank of Canada, do you anticipate modifying them at all? Well, we're forecasting a year-end rate of around 123 for Dollar Canada. That's around 81 cents US. We have signaled the risk of a brief downside overshoot towards 120 for Dollar Canada. That's around 83 cents US for the Canadian dollar at some point this year. And I think that's still a realistic possibility. The Scotiabank has upgraded its Bank of Canada interest rate forecast, and we now expect two quarter point rate increases in the second half of 2022. That's still some time away, obviously, but it would put the Bank of Canada well ahead of the Fed in terms of interest rate increases. And in the US, we see no tightening in monetary policy until 2023 at the earliest. Given that Bank of Canada forecast, we may well have to adjust our outlook for the Canadian dollar uh, to reflect a bit more strength and a bit more sustained strength in the Canadian dollar over the next 18 months or so. We will be issuing a forecast update in the course of the next few weeks. That was Sean Osborne, Chief Currency Strategist at Scotiabank. You can now find Scotiabank's Market Points on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. Don't miss an episode. Subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. And we want to hear from you. Please rate and review the show. Your feedback helps us improve the content we create for you. You'll find more thought-leading content on our website, gbm.scotiabank.com. And you can also follow us on Twitter at ScotiabankGBM, as well as our LinkedIn showcase page under Scotiabank Global Banking and Markets. Please refer to our legal disclosures on our website. I'm Greg White. Thanks for listening.